So here we can see that there is a projectile motion and that projectile motion has a range of almost 19.86 meters and a time of flight of 1.53 seconds. So let's start from the uh, new conditions as well, let's say. So we can see that and there is a projectile that has been uh, projected at a speed of 30 degrees at a speed of 15 meter per second at an angle of 30 degrees and we can find that the range from this uh, calculator or this uh, part and this measure is uh, coming out to be 19.86 meters in a time of flight of 1.53 seconds so first we understand what is the projectile so if we see that uh, the projectile is a any uh, particle or any uh, object which is thrown into the air or any any medium which is having a single acceleration okay which is having a single acceleration which is mainly responsible for changing the direction of that projectile so if we project a particle in a vertical direction as well then also it is a projectile if it is projected at some angle it is also a projectile so now we would be finding out the time of flight of this projectile as well and we'll be finding out the range that is the horizontal displacement of this particle from this origin point let's say we are considering this as an origin point so here we can see that we can see that this is the velocity of the projectile and it has a horizontal component equals to this angle is 30 degrees so we can find it as v cos 30 degrees and it has a vertical velocity as v sin 30 how it is being obtained using this triangle trigonometry if we say that uh, this is the perpendicular this is the base and this is the hypotenuse then we can find that the base upon hypotenuse is base upon hypotenuse is cos theta is equals to cos theta so if we say that the hypotenuse is equals to v so we have v equals to s times cos theta that is v cos theta that's why i have written as v cos 30. similarly if we see that this perpendicular upon hypotenuse so this perpendicular upon hypotenuse is sine theta so this is equals to perpendicular is equals to hypotenuse sine sine theta that is equals to v sine theta Hope this part is clear. Now let's move on. So if we have a velocity, let's say 15 meter per second in this case, then we can see that this uh, velocity is there in the direction, which is making an angle 30 degrees. So first we need to calculate the time of flight. The so time of flight is the time for which the particle is in air or in any medium okay and now it is again hitting it on the ground so the time of flight is the time taken to reach this particle that has been projected from this point to this point so if we need to calculate the time of flight which is re represented as capital t then we can use a simple relationship that is the vertical component will change into this v sine 30 in the negative direction because it is if if you uh, cut down this uh, projectile inclined motion into these two directions we can see that only in one direction it is having a velocity at a particular time and in the horizontal direction we can see that like this so we know that the vertical velocity that is the v sine 30 component will remain the same only its direction is going to be changed and this whole motion completes in a time interval that is capital T. So we know that the final velocity would be equals to V sine 30 minus V sine 30. Initial velocity is V sine 30 plus V sine 30 because it, it is in the upward direction minus G. Why we are using minus G? Because the acceleration due to gravity is in the downward direction. So minus G into T. So we are using an equation that is v is equals to u plus a. Okay, so we have a time of flight is equals to this plus v sine 30 goes over there. So this is minus 2 v sine 30 and we can find it as minus g 
so we can see that it is equals to two v sine thirty by g. So if we calculate this by this two into fifteen times sine thirty, that is point five divided by nine point eight one, it comes out to be one point five three seconds. So from here we can find that this formula formulation or analysis has validated what we have got through this simulation or this experiment so from this uh, time of flight we can find out range as well so let's start finding the range if we calculate the range we can see that there is horizontal motion that is involved horizontal motion means that this uh, from this point to this point this is the final point this is the initial point the direct distance along the horizontal direction is the range and range is a distance parameter so it would be calculated in meters centimeters millimeters or so on so we need to find this range so here it's the formula for the range we can derive as follows we know that uh, s is equals to ut plus half kt square this is the basic second equation of motion in the horizontal direction we know that the distance covered is range and the horizontal direction velocity is v cos theta and what time is being uh, there for reaching the particle to this point so it is the time of flight t from this we can find out range equals to v cos theta that is 15 cos 30 times the time of flight so time of flight comes out to be uh, if we use the formula then uh, we can have 2 U sine thirty, that is V sine thirty, V sine thirty by G, or if we use direct uh, value of this that we have found in the earlier one, then we can find it as fifteen cos thirty into one point five three seconds. So this comes out to be if you calculate it using a calculator or your basic calculations, then it comes out to be around nineteen point eight six meters. so thus we can see that uh, from the equations and from the experimental value both the values comes out to be same and it has uh, majorly validated what we find in actual uh, way as well so hope this solution or the physics part uh, in which i tried to uh, show you the experiment how it is done and i, I tried to validate it using the equations this is clear and if you have any doubts do let me know thanks for listening